Hello spooky friends and pumpkin pals. Today I will be sharing with you quite a few anticipated releases that are both new and also some backlist titles that I want to read this autumn. friends, my name is Lexi and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today is going to be a cozy and very, very chill video where basically I just tell you all of the books that I am anticipating for this fall. There are a lot of books on this list that are new releases. There are some that haven't even been released yet that I'm really, really excited to share with you today. So if you're like me and you're looking for autumnal book releases for like current and new books, maybe you'll find a couple on this list that that sound really, really nice and cozy to you. Also, I highly recommend that you pause the video and you grab yourself something super autumnal to either drink or eat. I just find videos like this are so much more fun when you have something cozy in your hand. And I am so excited because I brewed myself like this incredible cup of tea and it just smells like autumn. So I'm actually drinking this stuff, which is called Poe Me A Cup and I love it so much. So this is based off of Edgar Allan Poe, obviously, um, and it's called the Raven Blend. It's cranberry blood orange black tea. And to make it even more autumnal, I actually put a couple of like these giant, let me see if I can get it out, big cinnamon sticks. I added two of them in here with some honey and it just tastes and smells like fall. Like I can't explain it, it's perfect. So um, I hope you have something cozy to drink or eat. And without further ado, let's get started with the list. So first, let's go ahead and talk about all of the new anticipated releases that are coming out this fall that I am particularly really, really excited about. The first one is Under the Whispering Door and this is by TJ Klune. This is one of my most anticipated releases because TJ Klune wrote The House in the Cerulean Sea, which I and basically everyone else fell in love with last year. I thought it was absolutely charming and since then he has become one of my all-time favorite authors. So when I heard he was coming out with this particular book that sounds perfect for the spooky autumn season. I just got so excited and it actually just released I think September 21st. So this is about a person named Wallace and Wallace meets the Grim Reaper at his own funeral. That is his sign that he really must be dead. The Grim Reaper then takes him to this mysterious little town in the woods where there is a mysterious tea shop and the tea shop is run by a man named Hugo and Hugo actually helps all of these souls cross over to the other side. So instead of going directly to the afterlife, Wallace then is invited by the manager to live as much as he wants in the span of one week. It sounds so cozy. We've got the tea shop. We've got kind of like this magical little town. And I love the themes of like living life to the fullest. I think that this is going to be really, really cool. Perfect for the spooky season. It sounds so charming and whimsical, but also super, super cozy. The next book I have is actually a book that I don't have. And that is because it is not released, I think until like November 7th, I'm pretty sure. And that is this book here. And that is The Death of Jane Lawrence. And this is by Caitlin Starling. So this is an adult kind of gothic thriller slash possibly horror book. And the vibes of it sound so freaking good, you guys. So I'm going to go ahead and read from the synopsis on my laptop here because I don't have the book in front of me. I hope that's okay. So this book follows Jane, who marries the wealthy and reclusive Dr. Augustine Lawrence, who makes her promise to never visit this mysterious manor of his family. So obviously, you know that they are going to visit this forbidden manor of the family. <laughs> so I think on their wedding night, an accident happens and Jane ends up at this crumbling gothic mansion. I mean, the vibes of it already are so good. And once they're there, gothic, twisted, scary, spooky stuff happens. Like, I don't really know more than that. I don't know if this is going to have supernatural elements. I don't know if this is going to be like a tale of murder and survival. I've heard that this actually has like Crimson Peak vibes, which I never saw because it it looked too scary. I don't know why, but I can read about scary stuff. I can't watch it. The next book is another book that just came out actually this week, I think, possibly last week, but I want to say it just came out this week. And that is The Witch Haven, and this is by Sasha Payton Smith. This book is everything, and I am so excited about it. This is a YA fantasy book, and it involves like a magic school setting, which like I don't care how many books will have a magic school setting. I will never get enough of that setting. 
Yeah. So this follows Frances, and Frances is a seamstress in 1911 in New York, and one day she is actually attacked by a man, but then he mysteriously ends up with a pair of scissors sticking into his neck, and she can't explain how that happened because she swears she did not do that. But before she is condemned, she finds that there are two mysterious nurses who show up both wearing these beautiful capes, and they tell her that she has to go to a mysterious sanitarium because of the crimes that she has committed. However, when Frances goes to this mysterious mysterious sanatorium, she finds out that it's not actually a sanatorium at all. It is, in fact, a magic school. The next book I also don't have because it has not technically been released yet, and that is All of Us Villains, and this is by Amanda Foody, and the release date for this one, I believe, is November 9th. A lot of these books actually come out in November. And it's just great for us because the spooky season just keeps on going, you know what I'm saying? The genre for this is again YA fantasy and uh, this is kind of like The Hunger Games except instead of killing people with like knives and random things in a jungle, this is about like wealthy magicians killing each other with spells. <laughs> so, I'm in. Again, I'm gonna read from my handy dandy laptop, so I hope that's okay. So it says, after the publication of a scandalous tell-all book, the remote city of Ivernath is thrust into worldwide spotlight. Tourists flock to its spell shops and ruins to witness an ancient curse unfold. Every generation, seven families name a champion among them to compete in a tournament to the death. The winner awards their family exclusive control over the city's high magic supply, the most powerful resource source in the world. In the past, the villainous Lowe's have won nearly every tournament. Is it Lowe's or Lowe's? I don't know. Have won nearly every tournament and their champion is prepared to continue his family's reign. But this year, thanks to the influence of their newfound notoriety, each of the champions has a means to win or better yet, a chance to rewrite their story. But this is a story that must be penned in blood. I love this so much. I don't know why, but I love competition stories. Like I love it when a book has a setting where like characters have to compete for certain things or they're set in trials. It's just one of my favorite trials. Ropes, and then you add in there that we've got some magic elements. Oh, I mean, like, what a dream for me, you know? The next book I have here was just released. When was this released? It was either released like in late August or early September, and that is Sally Rooney's Beautiful World, Where Are You? This is an adult literary fiction, and while it doesn't have spooky vibes, it definitely has kind of like a cozy atmospheric vibe to it. Plus it was released in the fall, so it's perfect for this list. So this book kind of seems like a messy love square between four different friends. From the synopsis, it sounds like there are two different couples who are basically traveling to Rome, and I feel Feel like they all kind of hook up with each other, but I don't know in what capacity. Like, I don't know if it's like a, a group hookup, I don't know, or I don't know if like maybe there's cheating going on between the two different couple groups, um, or if there's like a love triangle and then a person is just like chilling on the couch. I don't know, I don't know, but I know that this is probably going to explore like heartbreak and heartache and trying to find like the beauty in being heartbroken and also recovering. I think that this is also going to delve into like friendships and possibly like love within friendships and how that can be really, really messy. I gave Normal People by Sally Rooney a five out of five star and I have so much faith in this author. So I can't wait to see what happens in this cozy, messy romance. The next book I have here is The Library of the Dead and this is by T.L. Huchu, I think. And this is an adult fantasy, possibly horror, but definitely has a lot of gothic vibes to it and it sounds incredible. This was released a couple of months ago and I'm gonna be honest with you. I saw the words library and then I saw the words dead and I thought two things immediately. Number one, I thought, wow, I really wish that was a real place because I would love to work there. And number two, I knew that I was gonna buy it. So this particular book is about Ropa who has dropped out of school to become like a ghost messenger. Apparently she can see the dead and she is delivering like messages to their families. This all takes place in Edinburgh and one day Ropa discovers that the ghosts are telling her that there is a mysterious evil force that is doing something bad to children. Like they're robbing children of joy or something. And so Ropa has to try to track down what is happening and she needs to stop this big bad, whoever the big bad is, so that the children in Edinburgh can be safe once again. And on her way to discovering who this big bad evil person is, she finds this mysterious library 
Diary of the Dead and a secret society and things get really dark and twisted and I'm so excited. And I think that is it for all of like the newer releases that have been released recently. So now I'm gonna go ahead and show you a couple of my backlist titles. The first book is the only classic that I have on this particular list. And I've talked about this book so many times on my channel. It will be a travesty if I do not read it. And that is Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. I have wanted to read this for such a, oh my God, that scared the living, what was that? This is about Dr. Victor Frankenstein. He is trying to prove that he can create life. His creation kind of goes awry when apparently it is hideous, which is very rude of that doctor to say. He accidentally creates like a monster. But I think that this is a book that is actually a lot more sad and introspective than just like a horrible monster who tries to like hurt all the townspeople. I've heard that this is such an emotional and beautiful story. I think it's gonna be really, really great. I've wanted to read this for forever. So yeah. The next book is a middle grade that I have also wanted to read forever and I've talked about so much on my channel and that is Amari and the Knight Brothers and this is by B.B. Alston. Again, this is middle grade and this is going to be a fantasy and it sounds so incredible. This follows Amari and Amari's brother Quentin has gone missing. When she is kind of like going through his room trying to look for clues as to where he might have gone, she finds in his closet a ticking briefcase and this ticking briefcase leads her to discover that there is kind of like a secret magical bureau, I think, where you can try out to go to a magical school. And she is convinced that Quentin has gone missing and the school knows something. And so she decides to enter in the tryouts and try to get her way into this magical school. I've heard so many good things about this book from Gavin and from so many of my friends. So I can't wait to read this. I think it'll be great. Plus, again, give me all of the magical school settings, you know? Next up, we have another middle grade and this one just sounds so charming. Charming. It is giving me major, major Kiki's delivery service vibes, and that is one of my favorite movies of all time. And that book is going to be Eva Evergreen, The Semi-Magical Witch, and this is by Julie Abe. So this particular book is about a girl named Eva, and Eva is training to be a witch. The problem is she only has a pinch of magic, and so she has to work twice as hard as everyone else to pull off the simplest magical tasks. On top of that, apparently whenever she does magic, she falls asleep. Sounds like me, honestly. Eva has to prove that she can do this magical test before she turns 13 to kind of get the title of being a witch. And if she can't do the test, then she can't be a witch. And so we are following her journey in this coastal little seaside village. And it just sounds so cute and so atmospheric. And I don't know, just like really, really, really charming. The next book is a book that I talked about quite a bit last October, and I really, really wanted to read it then. I still really, really want to read this book because it just sounds so immaculate. Like the vibes sound incredible. And that is The Deathless Girls, and this is by Kieran Millwood Hardgrave. This is going to be a YA fantasy slash gothic tale. And I think it might even have some like horror elements. So the only things I really know about this book is that it is following the wives of Dracula. So if you remember, Dracula actually had a multitude of wives and this is following two of his wives who I believe end up being in a relationship together. I've heard that it is very lyrical, that the prose is gorgeous, that it's spooky and atmospheric. It just, it sounds really, really good. Next up is a book that so many of you guys have been recommending to me and I've also been seeing randomly all over TikTok. I think it's gonna be so much fun to read and that is The Inheritance Games and this is by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. So the reason I get really, really excited every time I think about this book is because it sounds so much like Knives Out. And if you know anything about me, you know that I have recently become totally obsessed with this movie. I didn't see this last year when everyone else saw this. I just recently saw it and it is just, it is everything. It is so good. <laughs> so this particular book is about Avery and Avery is just trying to survive her senior year of high school. When she mysteriously gets invited to the reading of this billionaire's will and she discovers that she has inherited all of his money and she is now a billionaire. But the only way that she can inherit this money is if she stays in his mansion, which apparently has secret passageways. And also it is filled with his jealous family members who are very, very confused as to why they were written out of the will. And it just sounds 
perfect. Like the spooky vibes of it, oh, it just sounds really, really perfect for this time of year. The next book I have here is actually a self-published book, which is really cool. And that is The Atlas Six. And this is by Olivia Blake. I have heard so much about this book, um, specifically from TikTok. This is all over TikTok. And it just sounds really, really cool. This is a new adult fantasy and it has a lot of like dark academia vibes, which is totally my thing. So this is about a group of people. I think there's actually seven people People who are all trying to prove that they deserve a spot in this secret society of the Library of Alexandria, where I believe they study from the books in this library and then they also like protect the library or something like that. However, only six of them can actually make it and there are seven people. And I think that the seventh person who doesn't make it winds up dead. Or, or maybe I just actually threw that in there for dramatic effect. I don't actually remember. And the final book I have here is The Shadow of the Wind, and this is by Carlos Ruiz Zafan. And this is going to be a literary thriller, but also it has some spooky and gothic vibes as well. So this particular book takes place in 1945, I believe, in Barcelona, Spain. And we are following Daniel, who is our young protagonist. And when he is a little boy, his father actually takes him to this secret place, I think, in a bookstore. Like they go through a secret passageway in this bookstore and his father explains to Daniel that the books that are in this very secret place are books that are no longer like in print. They are books that are sent there like when they are being retired and all of the members of this little club are people who want to keep the books alive in some way. So he tells Daniel you can pick any book you want and Daniel picks the shadow of the wind. He ends up reading it and totally falling in love with it. But then when he grows up, he realizes that other books by this author are no longer like at any bookstores. Like you can't buy his works from anyone. And then on top of that, somebody is mysteriously going around and burning all of the old copies of this book as well. And then on top of all that, Whoever this person is who is mysteriously burning all of the copies of this book now is after Daniel because guess what he has? That's right, he has the shadow of the wind. And so we've got this like mysterious, scary person who's burning books, which honestly, if you ask me, that should put this genre as being a horror because that is just straight up terrifying. But we've got this mysterious person who is burning all these copies of this book, who's now after Daniel, and Daniel has to figure out what this book really is and who this author is and why people are burning this book. And it just, it sounds perfect. I actually started reading this last year, but grad school got to be quite a lot. And so I didn't actually get to finish this book. So I would like to actually restart this book and try to read it during this spooky season. And I think it's gonna be perfect. Lots and lots of spooky autumnal vibes in this and yeah. I love a good thriller. And you guys, that is it. Those are all of the books for my anticipated reads for this fall. If there are any anticipated releases or backlist titles that you think I should know about, please share them in the comments. I love it. I love it when the comment section is filled with other recommendations for books and new releases and things that you guys are excited about. That's kind of half of how I form my TBRs because the recommendations that you usually give are always right up my alley. And also if you want to leave me a message but you don't know what to leave me. Is there a fox emoji? Leave me a fox emoji. But I mean, look at this cute little fox. Okay, <laughs> I think that's it for now, you guys. So until next time, my spooky and lovely friends, keep your head in the clouds and your heart in a book. And I will talk to you very soon. Stay spooky. Mmm. God, that is good tea.